Um, do, 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 do. So we are here today for um, high performance uh, building systems. Um, so just to, an overview of the learning objectives, um, we'll get an understanding of various factors that influence building energy loads. We'll apply right sizing um, after pursuing passive design strategies, utilize controls to optimize the efficiency of equipment and identify energy efficient strategies to maintain occupant comfort. Um, as always, we wanna thank our sponsors. Um, we couldn't do the work we do without their support. Um, I think as most of you have been on it, I'll get to the video pretty quickly here. As we all know, buildings account for 40% um, of um, the CO2 emissions by sector. Um, so the 2030 challenge is a um, challenge to try to reduce and eliminate that um, through efficiency targets um, in a tiered threshold, um, currently operating on a 80% savings current right now and upping in 2025. Um, so process, again, you would create an account on a design data exchange, sign and upload the commitment, um, do a robust uh, firm sustainability action plan, and then report projects. Um, some of the reading I've been doing around this, this quote struck me recently. Um, the building envelope has a long life and should be given the greatest priority. While lighting systems last only five to 15 years before they are replaced, and HVAC systems last from 10 to 25 years, the building envelope will endure for 50 years or more and affect the energy use and design of lighting and HV HVAC systems for the entire life of the building. Um, and that's um, a quote from Charles Elay in the Design Professional's Guide to Zero Net Energy Building. Um, it resonated with me, particularly we're working on some projects where um, making some, being asked to make some questionable envelope decisions. And um, this resonated with me um, after I was sort of pushed back on saying, how much does the envelope really impact my HVAC design? Um, and I'm sure we could all argue the merits of the answer to that question, but what struck me is what's the investment you're making in your project, um, knowing you're gonna replace those systems sometime in the next decade or two. Meanwhile, you're gonna hope to own and operate this building for 50 years or more, and this is the time to make decisions that are gonna impact the life of this building. So that, that's something I wanted to share with the group that resonated with me and was sort of inspirational and motivating for this work. Um, so with that, we'll dive into the building or the present the video, and uh, we will then um, have some dialogue after. So thanks, everyone. Um, so I guess as a follow up, thanks, everyone, for um, attending today. Um, I hope that was informative. I know um, that last little bit for me about being able to understand the cost differences of, hey, this is going to cost you X, but it's going to save you Y is um, something we're finding challenging right now in terms of finding those costs. But I do think, um, as we all know, money usually talks with our clients. Um, and so I think it's probably something critical that um, in particular, we as architects need to be better about is at least thinking in that way to propose the question and whoever, um, whether it's CM partners we're working with or um, engaging with subcontractors, I think that certainly helps um, to answer some of those questions and just enhances the value we bring um, to our clients. Um, I guess before I talk a little bit about the slide that's on screen, I guess any questions or reactions or comments to um, the video we just watched? 
I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll add to what you were talking about, Andrew, about costs, and just kind of reiterate another point. And it seems like the exterior envelope is always the first thing to be um, to to be on the chopping block to be engineered, uh, cost engineered. So, um, which is always really interesting to me because if you look at the overall um, budget and the elements that contribute to that budget, the exterior enclosure usually is only about, you know, five, maybe 10% of the overall right. budget. And so refocusing that perspective is also um, a big piece of the conversation. Yeah, Andrew, this is Dennis. I think the other thing that comes across from that presentation is the fact that in our business, we tend to look at systems individually. And, you know, particularly when you've got a CM, they are pricing it, it's all broken out by system by system. And yet, in almost all the examples, they kept looking at everything from a holistic viewpoint, not just one system at a time. My, I made a, one of the comments in the video in a quote I wrote down was thinking of buildings as an ecosystem. So the refrigeration that they harvested the hot water from, it's like, man, that, that's an easy example of, well, hey, now not only did you reduce the size of the, and cost of the mechanical system, you're also using that resource somewhere else in the building. And, um, yeah, and that, Go that ahead, makes Sean. it harder. Oh, I was just going to say, when it's more integrated like that, it makes it harder to get rid of, um, you know, when you're looking at cost. It's, um, I don't know if any of you have, I won't, I won't misconstrue that I've read the whole book, but um, the integrative, Integrative Design Guide to Green Building. Um, it came out in 2009 and um, it, was a, it was sort of a foundational book to the integrative design credit in LEED. Um, and I, I always use an example from that of how does paint color impact HVAC sizing? And it, it goes to this exercise of basically challenging the rules of thumb that lighting engineers use to put the amount of light in there and then how that reduces the heat load from light and on and on. And um, I thought of that with that refrigeration comment, like there's just another example that I'm gonna put in my repertoire of, hey, here's just some, here's an example of what I'm talking about, um, of ways we can do this and ways it saves you money, um, Mr. and Mrs. Owner. And, um, I think I've been in plenty of those meetings where, yeah, envelope gets VE'd and it's like, okay, great. You changed that, but did you track it through? Cause now the air handlers just got two tons bigger and you need more fans and you need this. So we saved $30,000, but we just added 300 to sort of use the same numbers they used. And then it's like, Sometimes those get contentious because obviously the CMs are in a position of trying to get the project on budget. And depending on how you propose that, it sort of makes them look bad. Like, well, no, we didn't think about that. We're just trying to cut cost. And it's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> we know what's going on here. So, um, One of the things I wanted to include um, just thinking about the session in advance and trying to bring more value to it outside the videos. Um, so as it relates to envelope, again, I've been referencing this new net zero book by Maclay Architects. And this was a table that's in that book um, that is the video sort of alluded to it too. It's like, it's a starting point. It's not end all be all. Um, but I know in our practice, we're starting to use this from a, here's where we start and then we're running Cove tool or they demonstrated Autodesk Insight in the video um, and pushing and pulling some of these things. Um, and so um, watching a different webinar this morning and they said, feel free to screenshot it. If you wanna screenshot it, I know Pam's been posting these on YouTube as well. So 
Um, and now that, oh, never mind. I thought I had a, a typo, but um, that this is a good sort of starting point in terms of envelope design of metrics to try for. Um, and the only one that really seems way out of whack or beyond code substantially. A roof at an R60 is obviously double our current energy code in Michigan. Um, and I think you it's always important to in, analyze for diminishing returns as well. Um, but I think this is a good starting point for really high performing tight envelopes. Um, and potentially, in the process of working with engineers to establish um, initial heating and cooling loads, it's, hey, if we design it here, can you quantify the difference from code to this on your energy loads? So um, just things I've found in my travels and research in this, and I wanted to make sure to share with the group. Um, let's see. Um, that was really, I don't know if there's any other dialogue or commentary on that. Um, otherwise we can wrap up. When you guys, when you, uh, I'm just asking questions about, you know, your process, design process. Um, when you guys start like your initial energy model in like an SD phase or DD, um, do you guys start with these numbers? Or do you start with like code minimums? Um, we have been trying to start with these numbers. Um, okay. More to um, to be a feed into the heating and cooling load discussion. So, hey, here's where we're starting, and here's where we're seeing the building perform currently. Um, in full transparency, we have then had clients that even before we put it into the modeler. Um, hey, here's where we like to start with our envelope design. And right away it was, no, we're not doing that. Um, and, you know, they made a lot of references in the video to educating clients and stuff. And I think that's something for our practice, we're sharpening our pencils on trying to get better at that piece um, in terms of the education. Um, we had, we understand all this and then it's sort of trying to convey it to someone else who is just like i don't understand how they're going to put six inches of insulation on the wall how is a how is an installer going to do that and it's like well people are doing it so i mean it's possible um but the client the feedback and questions we get back in turn i guess is furthering our process as well in terms of um answering those questions. Um, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, we'll have deeper ties, right? But now it's, I go back to the office and it's like, well, yeah, how are we gonna do that? What does that wall assembly look like? So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's where we're starting. I would say we haven't 100% ended up there yet, but we've also had, a lot more tenant fit out work lately than um, brand new buildings or retrofits. Yeah. So that's sort of, we also, I guess, again, in full transparency, haven't fully tested a lot of these things just in terms of the type of work we're doing. So oh, fantastic. Um, so again, my question always will be, will you make the commitment today? Um, a couple resources again, um, I guess a few event plugs. So, um, here's my typo I was afraid of, um, in two weeks, um, we'll have the next session in this series. Um, so that's October 26th at 1130 and that'll be on role of renewable energy. Um, and then I just want to give a plug out to bigger chapter events. Um, so the in, on October 28th, um, that's two Thursdays from now, um, the AIA Honor Awards will be happening at the Lit GR 
um, and I plan on attending and um, I hope to see many of you there. Um, so with that, I will uh, let everyone get back to their days. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah.